By this point, many of you are likely very familiar with this, the Chromecast with Google TV. It's awesome. It's relatively inexpensive at 50 bucks, has a remote, gives you the best of Chromecast and Android TV. But what you might not be familiar with are devices like this, the new Android TV box from On, which is an in-house Walmart brand that costs less than the Chromecast with Google TV and does almost the exact same stuff. But before we jump into the differences in UI and what it does and doesn't do and all that kind of stuff, I just wanted to point out a couple differences in the outer parts of these devices. Now, ultimately, both of these things are kind of destined to live behind your TV. You're not going to set this on a desk or a table. And same goes with this one. Even though it's kind of shaped in a box sort of manner that you could maybe leave on a, a tabletop or something, there's a cable on each side. So HDMI on one side, micro USB on the other. It would look really weird on any table. It's not meant, you know, with all the ports in the back to where it could sit on your TV stand in a nice way. It just isn't built that way. So likely it's going to find its life behind your TV somewhere, just like the Chromecast does. So ultimately what it looks like doesn't really matter, but I did want to show it to you on camera so you can kind of see it's about the same size. They're both very light and, and uh, you know, decent looking. Where the hardware differences really start to differentiate between the two is in the remotes. Now, the Chromecast with Google TV was a big deal because it had a remote and we were excited about that. And honestly, it's the remote I kind of go to when I sit down to watch TV. Now I pick it up, it turns my stuff on, I can change inputs, I can change volume levels on my TV's built-in surround sound system, I can change channels, Google Assistant, shortcuts, all that stuff. This on streamer actually uses the same spec, so it's using Google spec for Android TV. Uh, it just adds more buttons to the mix here. So you still have home and Google Assistant and stuff like that, but you can set bookmarks, you have a settings button, you have your volume, your channel up and down, your mute button, and then four shortcuts down here at the bottom. So, I mean, it's just basically like this remote, uh, but a little bit better. And when you look at the shape of the things from the face on view, this looks really cool and I like the way it looks and feels in the hand, but it's very slippery because it's so rounded. It just tends to slip out of my hands a lot. This one, not so much at all. And it'll do some of the same tricks. You know, it's got an IR blaster so you can control your volume. You can control your inputs and all that stuff on your TV, just like you can with this remote. Uh, so ultimately I kind of like this remote better and you can pair this one up with your Chromecast with Google TV as well and it'll work and do all the same tricks. But that's really about it from a hardware perspective. I mean, when it comes down to it, the remotes are a little bit different. The build quality is a little bit different, but let's jump over to the screen and see what it looks like to actually use this thing. All right, so we have this on Android TV fired up and ready to go. I'm all logged in. And I'll say, like, we're not going to go through the entire login process. It was really, really simple, really straightforward, just like the Chromecast with Google TV. And though this is still being branded Android TV, uh, you can tell that Android TV is being rebranded and kind of rethought to mimic a little bit more of what Google's doing with the new Chromecast. And you can see it here. Honestly, if you don't have a Google TV or you don't look at the home screen that often, you'd be forgiven for thinking that's what we're looking at here. But this this is what Android TV looks like now. And I'm going to navigate through it just a little bit. But I mean... The things are, are familiar here at this point. We've got a nice big hero space up at the top that if you don't touch it, it expands to full screen and lets you kind of go through, you know, different suggestions that it thinks you'd like. You've got your list of apps right after that. And then you've got all these different channels. And, you know, this is featured by Google Play and YouTube recommended, Netflix recommends, Prime Video. Uh, you, you get it. It's the same kind of interface that we've seen on the Chromecast with Google TV. However, up top, you'll notice there's some different things up there. So the live TV thing is gone. Um, but there is a spot on your remote once you've hooked up uh, YouTube TV. So if I hit the little TV icon here, it's going to take me right to my live TV. And because I was already in here watching, this is normally where it would take you. So if I were to fully exit that, see if it'll let me close that. Yeah, it's going to take you to your, kind of your guide section of YouTube TV, which is pretty cool. Um, so yeah, you don't get the live TV interface here that you would on Chromecast with Google TV, but not that big of a deal, not that big of a loss, because ultimately, even on uh, the new Chromecast, when you click into any of those live TV things, it takes you right over to Google or to YouTube TV, I'm sorry. Um, so it's, it's not like it's that big of a difference. You have the Discover tab here now. This is part of the new UI layout. Um, this is where kind of the top picks for you. So the, the stuff that maybe you don't even have installed, if you've said, yeah, I'm cool with you showing me stuff uh, from wherever. So if I go through here, uh, Disney Plus, 
YouTube. I'm trying to find one of these services that I don't have installed on here. Hulu. I don't have Hulu installed. And so it's showing me some stuff from Hulu that it thinks based on my watching habits that I might like. And so here's some stuff that's on live TV right now and some comedies. And so this is kind of what you get on the home screen, the main home screen with the Google TV UI uh, versus a little more specific stuff on the main home screen here on Android TV. But Again, you can definitely tell that Google is bringing these two ecosystems together, so much so that now I'm gonna flip over and show you the Chromecast with Google TV's UI so that you can see them side by side. All right, so now we've switched over to the Chromecast with Google TV and already you can tell this is a lot of the same type of stuff. You got a big hero space. You've got recommendations below. Sure, the tabs up top are a little bit different. And, you know, they've got, uh, I don't have YouTube TV signed in here, but you would have a live tab up here as well that you could see your live stuff. But ultimately, the idea is kind of the same. The execution is kind of the same here. We're just seeing a bunch of content right up front. And sure, there is a, a section for your apps if you've installed apps, but ultimately this experience and the Android TV experience is all about surfacing content that the services think that you would like and you might want to watch because at the end of the day, I might see something, click on it, watch a trailer and think, oh, yeah, I, I would like to watch that. And maybe I'll sign up for that free one month trial for that streaming service and decide that I like it. That's what happened with me with HBO Max. I ended up seeing something I wanted to watch and I was like, yeah, I'll try it, I'll, I'll go for the trial. And it's all, all sorts of content that I thought would be interesting. And so I've kept this subscription live for a little bit and absolutely loved it and canceled some other subscriptions to kind of make up for it. But at the end of the day, what, what's important to note here is that uh, th this experience, the way that this works, uh, is not unique to the Chromecast, the new Chromecast anymore. It's not like Android TV is one thing and Google TV is this whole other thing. It's now like they've brought the two together. And though they're slightly different here and there, ultimately the idea of just surfacing new content, suggested content, and keeping content first and foremost every, every time you look at the screen, that obviously has uh, kind of transcended from Google TV over to Android TV. And the reason that is important is this new on TV is a whole lot more inexpensive than the Chromecast with Google TV. So I've switched it back over here so we can kind of finish out talking about this. But the on streaming box, uh, this Android TV box, for me, I've been using it for about a week now, and I don't really feel like I'm missing out on a whole lot. I mean, ultimately, it has the same casting ability, so if if you leave it sit for long enough, it'll go to you know your wallpaper screen, and you can cast stuff to it just like you can with a Chromecast. Um, I've got all of my apps here, uh, you know, YouTube TV, everything that works on the the Chromecast with Google TV works here. Stadia works. I mean, heck, I'll launch it just so you can see that it's working. Uh, if I had my Stadia remote, I've already done this. They, it plays just fine on here. Nothing's different than what you would get on the Chromecast. And yet it is $20 cheaper. And while that might not sound like a whole lot of money, when we're talking about a $50 dongle in the new Chromecast versus this $30 4K dongle from on, that's a lot of money. I mean, heck, what's that 40% savings for a brand new device that's going to basically do the same thing. And I, I ultimately think this was Google's plan to begin with is introduce the Chromecast with Google TV, get people uh, enjoying streaming stuff and using the Android TV interface, because even though it is Google TV on the Chromecast, it really is just Android TV with a different skin on it. And now that they've kind of brought some of that mojo over to Android TV, I think Android TV has new life now because you've got this remote that's the same spec as the Chromecast remote. You've got a, a box that is even cheaper than the already cheap Chromecast that does all the same stuff, has all the same cool buttons, does all the same tricks with the remote. You're not really missing out on much of the experience and I don't think Google is too concerned about this because they are getting their content and their licensing agreements with all of these streaming services out to more eyes and in front of more people. And that's ultimately what it's about. It's about the content. It's about the content delivery services. And so if the Chromecast with Google TV only served to get people interested in this platform and to get companies like On and Walmart making things like this that are super affordable and great experiences to use, then they've absolutely succeeded. And it's pretty easy for people like us to be like, I don't know why I would tell you to go get the Chromecast necessarily over this. It's got the same eight gigs of storage on board. It's got 4K support. It's got a great interface. It's got a great remote. Everything moves around really quick. All the apps that you want are gonna work on here. 
why not save yourself 20 bucks and maybe buy two of these and put it on two TVs instead of just buying the one Chromecast. But really, that's about it. I mean, there's nothing really else to say here. You click on the content you want, you install the app you want, you watch the stuff you want. It makes for a great uh, television experience. And honestly, the fact that this thing is 30 bucks is a little mind blowing at this point. I mean, it's cheaper than what the Chromecast, the Chromecast that had no UI, no remote used to be. And so, uh, it's just an easy recommend. Uh, we've had a great time with it. Everything we've wanted to do on it works the way we would expect it to. And so uh, as much as we love the Chromecast with Google TV, I think this is my go-to recommendation when someone wants a smart TV streaming dongle now, and it's as easy as just walking into Walmart and picking one up. But guys, that's it for this one. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up, head down there and hit that subscribe button, and uh, make sure and click the notification icon as well if you'd like to be alerted when we make future videos just like this one. Until next time, we'll see you.